टुडे वील बी सॉल्विंग मे जून ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन पेपर टू एंड द वेरियंट इज ट्वेंटी टू कैमरे जो लेवल्स मैथमेटिक्स मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर वन The price of an electric drill is dollar seventy eight. In a sale, the price is reduced by fifteen percent. Calculate the sale price. There are two methods by which you can do it. First, if we go for this method, you calculate fifteen percent of seventy eight, which becomes eleven point seven dollars, and then you find. the remaining cost which is 66.3 dollars method 2 you can find that 15% is the discount and you have to paste 85% so directly find 85% of 78 which is again 66.3 make a habit of writing the answer in the answer space Moving on to part B, the exchange rate between dollars and euros is given as shown. Michael earns hundred euros, changes hundred dollars to euros. So let us convert this. We had one dollar is equals to zero point eight five euros. So when we are given with hundred dollars, these will these will make x euros cross multiply. So x is equals to zero point eight five times so one hundred. So now Michael has eighty five euros. He buys a clock for fifty eight point five nine. So if we spend fifty eight point five nine, you are left with twenty six point zero one euros. This last part of the question says change remaining money back to dollars. Use the same exchange rate. Dollar one is equals to zero point eight five euros, and now we have to find dollars that is unknown, and twenty six point zero one. Again, go for cross multiplication. Twenty six point zero one is equals to zero point eight five y. Divide this on the other side. Zero point eight five. And you get thirty point zero, thirty point six dollars. C part, A is simple. Simple interest at two point one percent. Second part is compound interest at two percent per year. Petro invests thirty five hundreds in A simple account for four years. Elena invests the same amount, that is thirty five hundred, for four years in compound account. At the end of four years, who has more money in their account and by how much? So first we'll calculate money and then the difference. So let me solve for petrol first. That is, I equals P R T by one hundred. P is the price invested, which is thirty five hundred. Rate is two point one percent. Time is four years, and you get two ninety four dollars as interest. Total amount would be price plus interest. Price is thirty five hundred, and the interest is two ninety four, which makes a total of three seven nine four. Solving for the other companion, Elena, who invested in compound interest, A equals P one plus R over one hundred raised to the power given time. Invested amount, principal amount is thirty five hundred one plus. The rate is two percent. Make use of calculator, and you get a value of three seven double eight point five one. we can clearly see that the larger amount is for petro so the difference in amount is 3794 minus 3788.51 and the difference is 5.49 dollars so completing this statement the result is that petro 
has the more money by 5.49 dollars question number 2 the table shows the mid day temperature and the number of cups of hot chocolate natasha sells on each of the 10 days complete this scatter diagram the first five points these five are already plotted so we'll plot the next five that is 21 with 8 on the horizontal axis two small boxes represent one unit so 21 and 8 5 6 7 and 8 lies here excuse a little disruption in this point and uh, then we have 6 with 17, 6 and 15, 16, 17, 6, 17, 5, 21, 5, here is 20, and there you go, 5, 21, x, 12, and y, 16, so this is 12, and here you have 16, Last is x23 and y6. 1, 2, 3. So x is 23 and y is 6. So here is the point. Complete the scatter diagram. The first five done. Describe the relationship between the midday temperature and the temperature of hot chocolate. So there is a clear trend you can see when we move towards right the graph is actually falling down so it is a negative trend that would mean that with the increase in temperature with the increase in temperature the sale reduces lesser number of cups are sold at higher temperatures when the day is hot c part says by drawing a line of best fit estimate the number of cups of hot chocolate sold when midday temperature is 17 so line of best fit does not actually means that you have to pass your line from each point so place the scale and see if it balances points above or below the line so at random this would look like this Drawing the line and the remaining part says when the temperature is 17. So from your very graph, go to this point 15, 16, 17 and then move up. And I see that my graph intersects at 10. So the sale would be 10 cups. Question number 3. Simplify. So 4 minus 7 is minus 3a and solving these two we have plus 5b. So my answer is 5b minus 3a. Solve. I have to solve for m. m by 2 is equals to 5 plus 4. m by 2 is equals to 9. Cross multiply m is equals to 18. Rearrange to make t the subject. So cross multiply 3 with u, 3u is equals to t plus 4, making t the subject, leaving it behind, so 3u minus 4. Expand, just simply multiply, 3, 2 times is 6, y into y square is y cube, plus 3, 5 times is 15, y. Do not forget to write answers in the answer space. Question number 4 says, 100 adults in a town were surveyed about number of emails they received one day. The table shows the results. Find the mod. Mod is most frequent. So the highest frequency is 28. So mod of emails is 4 emails. Calculate the mean. Mean is sum of fx over sum of f. So 1 into 8 plus 2 into 10 plus 3 into 22 plus 4 into 28 plus 5 into 15 plus 6 into 9 plus 7 into 5 plus 8 into 3 and divided by total frequency which is 100. 
leaving an answer of 394 by 100 3.94 it is your choice you can give your answer in simplified form of fractions or decimals there is no restriction one of these results is chosen at random find the probability that they receive fewer than four emails so fewer than four emails we coming back to this table and see fewer than four emails would mean one email or two or three so these are the individuals who received less than four emails which are 8 10 and 22 so 8 10 and 22 and there were 40 people who received less than four emails so converting it into probability that is 40 out of 100 here there is a restriction that you have to give your answer as fraction in simplest form so do not write 0 0.4 instead simplify the fraction so the answer is 2 by 5 the town has 18,000 adults total amount total is given use the survey results to estimate the number of adults in the town who received exactly 5 emails so again from the table we know that there were 50 people who received five emails out of a total of 100 so 15 by 100 times 18,000 you get 2700 as answer a slightly different way of thinking would be that 15 out of 100 got five emails so x out of 18,000 will get 5 email you cross multiply you get the same results question number 5 use set notation to describe the subset shaded in the Venn diagram so a and b are totally out of the picture so if we make a union of a and b and take it out we are left with the shaded region B part you're given with the universal set which is from 2 to 12 then P Q R it is advised that you write the elements before you proceed so X is a factor of 36 out of the given universal set it is 2 3 4 6 9 and 12 second is multiple of 4 multiple of 4 are 4 8 and 12 r is clearly 3 to 6 so all the elements from 3 to 6 are 3 4 5 6 complete the venn diagram so if i see my first number is 2 and i can see that it is not in q not in r so it is only in p then 3 i can find 3 in two sets which is p and r right here 3 is in p and r so moving slowly looking at the preceding numbers we fill this Venn diagram now see for yourself 4 lies in all three of them so if it lies all three of them it will be shown in the intersection part where all three overlap and so on 5 is only in R 6 lies in both P and R 7 lies in none of them so 7 comes out of the circle then we have 8 which is only in Q we have 9 which is in P only then 10 it is not in any of these then 11 again is not in any of these and for 12 it lies in P and Q so there you go this is your completed Venn diagram second part says list the elements of P intersection Q union R complement first of all Q union R this complete part is Q union R this is Q union R if I have to make complement of this that is remove this from the universal set you subtract this and you find the intersection of the subtracted part which we can see here in blue are these three and these two so when q intersection q union r complement so we are left with 2 9 7 10 11 and there is only two common 9 which is 
intersecting with this part so your answer is 2 and 9 find n p union q n means you have to count the elements so p union q count all of the elements in p and q so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so there are 7 elements in this section use the set notation to complete the statement okay now this symbol actually means a null set null set or empty so that's a null set or empty set so we can see that this portion right here is an empty cell it is an intersection of r and q but the portion of p is absent so intersection of r and q but the part which intersects with P is absent, so make a complement of that. Question number 6. P, Q, R is an isosceles triangle where P, R is equals to Q, R. So the common part is R. P is the point X1, Y5. We are using this grid. This is X1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if we label it here, this is P which is 1 comma 5 and q is 5 comma 1 so 1 2 3 4 5 5 and 1 so we have q which is 5 and 1 and it is already given that p r and q r are equal if this is p this is q having said that they are equidistant would mean it actually lies on the perpendicular bisector so this is the line where r we can place r so to make PR and QR equal now there is one other restriction that it cannot be a right angled so you have to see where it makes right angled triangle it is do these two positions so ignore these two for example if I consider a point right below P and horizontally to left of Q this is the point we will ignore this point another point right here we ignore this point because if we consider these two it will be a right angle and there is one third point which you have to ignore which is first let us draw this line it lies on this line and you have to ignore this point because it will make it a straight line it will no longer be a triangle so you can write any point on this line other than these three any point and selecting 2 comma 2 from here 6b here are the equations of five curves sketch sketches of these of the curves are drawn three of the curves are drawn write the correct equation underneath each sketch so we can see that first is x squared something second is x squared but with a negative number as it is a sad face third is x cube something so looking for the first one we have one squared equation we have second squared equation and we have third squared equation i'm ignoring the first one because that is negative x square so gone these two encircled if i use a value of x zero if you put x0 here you get minus 8 so this is not the case clearly our equation is x square minus 3x so this is done ruled out secondly this is very clear that it is a quadratic equation with a negative sign that is 2 minus x square now we are left with lesser choices for cubic expression if you look at that you have 1 and 2 again for yourself just substitute x 0 here and we get minus 2 when I substitute x 0 here I get 0 and you can see that it is not intersecting at the origin so your correct choice is the one on the left that is x cube minus 2 C part a is a given point B is another point find the equation of line perpendicular which passes through midpoint so basically perpendicular bisector A B we find the midpoint and we find the equation of perpendicular bisector so starting with the first thing midpoint 
मिड पॉइंट ऑफ ए बी एक्स वन प्लस एक्स टू बाई टू वाई वन प्लस वाई टू बाई टू माइनस वन प्लस थ्री बाई टू माइनस फाइव प्लस थ्री बाई टू थ्री माइनस वन इज टू टू बाई टू इज वन माइनस फाइव प्लस थ्री इज माइनस टू बाई टू इज माइनस वन सो वी हैव द मिड पॉइंट देन वी गो फॉर ग्रेडियंट ऑफ ए बी सो ग्रेडियंट ऑफ ए बी इज वाई टू माइनस वाई वन ओवर एक्स टू माइनस एक्स वन यूजिंग द गिवन कॉर्डिनेट्स वाई टू माइनस वाई वन ओवर एक्स टू माइनस एक्स वन इज एट बाय फोर एंड द ग्रेडियंट इज टू नाउ वी नो द मिड पॉइंट द ग्रेडियंट वी आर गोइंग फॉर द ग्रेडियंट ऑफ पेंडिकुलर लाइन एम वन टाइम्स एम टू इज इक्वल्स टू माइनस वन सो फर्स्ट ग्रेडियंट इज टू सेकेंड इज अन नोन एंड इट कम्स आउट टू बी नेगेटिव वन बाई टू नाउ यू एक्चुअली हैव द ग्रेडियंट ऑफ अर पेंडिकुलर लाइन यू नो वेयर द इक्वेजन पासिस we have the point we have the gradient so going for the equation y is equals to mx plus c y is minus 1 gradient is 1 by 2 with a negative sign x is 1 plus c solving for this c comes out to be negative 1 by 2 and do not forget to write the equation y is equals to the gradient is negative 1 by 2 and y intercept is Negative one by two again. So this is negative one by two x minus one by two. Question number seven. A rectangular field measures by thirty and forty-five. Calculate the perimeter. Perimeter is two length plus breadth. So two forty-five plus thirty is two. Times seventy five, which is one fifty. Calculate the length of the diagonal. If you have this way, the length of diagonal is basically using Pythagoras theorem. So forty five squared plus thirty squared, whole under the root, and use your calculator to get an answer of fifty four point zero eight or fifty four point one. Question seven B, you are given with this triangle and you have to calculate A. You cannot apply sine rule because it requires two sides and two angles. You have three sides, you have one angle, so we will go for cos rule. General form is a square equals b square plus c square minus two times b times c and cos of that angle. So I am going to use this and plug in the values. I have this set of value, 60 opposite to a plus 4. So this is my selected side. A plus 4 whole square is equals to square of other two sides. One, the second side is 11 minus 2 into a into 11 into cos of 60. Now you are left with simplification to solve for a. A plus 4 whole square is a square plus. 2 ab plus b square is equals to a square plus 121 minus 22 a and cos 60 is 0.5. This a square cancels out with this. You take it on the other side. You cancel it here. It is one and the same thing. So we have 8 a plus 16 is equals to 121. 22 into 0.5 is 11 a. Rearranging. We get eight a plus eleven a is equals to one twenty one minus sixteen. Eight and eleven are nineteen a is equals to one o five. A is equals to one zero five by nineteen, and the answer is approximately five point five two six. And I'll choose to write answer till two decimal places or three significant figures. So this is my answer. Question number seven C. The diagram shows a sketch of quadrilateral A, B, C, D. All lengths are in centimeters. The area of quadrilateral A, B, C, D is seventy. Okay, this complete shape is seventy centimeters square. 
calculate d a b d a b we have to find this angle right here we have to find this angle so 70 centimeters is already given and i know that this section is a perfect right angle triangle so its area would be just for the ease i'm calculating it here or else i'll have to move it up and down i want the diagram to be displayed so 1 by 2 into base into height the area is 40 complete area was 70 so 70 minus this 40 is 30 so we now know that this red region is 30 centimeters square if it is 30 centimeters square we can use our formula that area is equals to 1 by 2 a b sin c area is 30 equals to 1 by 2 a first side b second side and the inclusive angle which is actually unknown so we will be finding c a b angle by simplifying this given expression so this is 30 times 2 over 8 into 9 is equals to sin c using your calculator you get sin c is equals to 0 0.833 you don't have to round off in fact use the exact values in your calculator sin inverse of answer and that would be 56.44 degrees now I know that this is 56.44. The demand of question was to find the complete angle DAB. So solving for this blue section using tan. Tan of A is equals to perpendicular over base. So tan A solving for A is equals to tan inverse 10 by 8 and you get 51.3 degrees so final answer d a b is equals to 51.3 plus 56.4 and your answer is 107.7 degrees Question number 8 from functions f of minus 2 simply just plug in f of minus 2 in this so 3 into minus 2 minus 5 minus 6 minus 5 is minus 11 b part says find the largest value satisfying this so f of x is 3 times g of x f of x i'm copying that that is 3x minus 5 is greater than 3 times g of x is 4x plus 4 by 3 and we simplify these two 3x minus 5 is greater than 4x plus 4 rearranging 3x minus 4x is greater than 4 plus 5 negative x is greater than 9 divide negative sign on the other side this inverts x is less than minus 9 so this is minus 9 and this is x and the question says largest integer so largest integer which is less than minus 9 but largest is negative 10 solve for f of x equals g of 3x minus 5 i'll simplify this part first g of x was 4x plus 4 by 3 4x plus 4 by 3 so if i have to substitute 3x minus 5 inside this that means 3x minus 5 is replaced in the given x so this is it which is actually according to the question equal to f of x so 4 times 3x minus 5 by 3 equals to f of x which is 3x minus 5 so we cross multiply and simplify 4 3 times is 12x minus 20 plus 4 is equals to 9x minus 15 taking all the x on left hand side taking all the numbers 
to right hand side 3x is equals to 20 minus 4 is 16 minus 15 is 1 so x is equals to 1 by 3 solve for g inverse 5 let's write g of x here so it is easy to see it was 4x plus 4 over 3 4x plus 4 over 3 if you remember the concept whenever you have g of x is equals to y the inverse is the switch of it g inverse y will give you x so here the question says that g inverse of x is 5 so what will be the actual value of x which gives 5 so you can always use a reverse of it you substitute 5 in g of x so g of 5 is equals to 4 into 5 plus 4 by 3 4 5 times 20 plus 4 by 3 24 by 3 that is 8 so actually g inverse of 8 is 5 just for comparison the question is complete just for comparison if we say g of 5 is equal to 8 so g inverse of 8 will be equal to 5 using this concept we did this part question number 9 is from mensuration a cone has a radius of 6 centimeters the slant height the total surface area of the cone is 84 pi centimeter squared show that the length slant height is 8 okay total surface area is given so we know that total surface area is equals to pi r square area of base and pi r l the curved area 84 pi is equals to i'm taking out pi as common and radius is 6 squared plus 6 times the length pi cancels out with pi 84 is equals to 36 plus 6 l 84 minus 36 is equals 6 times length 48 is equals to 6 times length so 48 by 6 is your length 8 so that's shown calculate the volume of the cone just plug in the formula volume is 1 by 3 area of base times height and we need to calculate this height first using Pythagoras theorem L square equals 8 square plus 6 square length L is already shown that is 8 8 square minus 6 square equals height square H square is equals to 28 and H is equals to square root 28 so 1 by 3 pi and the radius was 6 height is square root 28 use your calculators 199.48 or you can write 199.5 200 is also acceptable if you write that 9c a similar cone has a total surface area of this find the radius it lies in the topic of similarity and congruency so similar a1 by a2 is equals to l1 by l2 whole square some students like to write area of small over area of large equals length of small over length of large both are acceptable so the new area is 47.25 pi the old area was 84 pi new length is unknown previous radius was 6 whole squared simplifying using your calculator cancel out these two pi and when you plug in 47.25 by 84 you actually get 9 by 16 is equals to l1 by 6 equals whole square square root on both sides this is 3 by 4 we are dealing here with areas and lengths so no need to put a sign of negative positive negative no need for that l1 by 6 cross multiply 18 by 4 is the radius so required radius equals 4.5 centimeters moving on to question 10 circles 
Okay, this is the circle A, B, and C are points on the circumference of a circle center O, O, B, D. O, B, D is a straight line. We'll need this. If it is a straight line, this is 180 minus, minus 130, which is 50 degrees. So find A, C, B. A, C, B. This is our ultimate goal, A, C, B. And give reason for each of this step. Okay. So I've already written 50. That is 180 minus 130 is equals to 50. And the reason is straight line. Straight line is 180 degrees. I'm writing this 50 at A. So angle A is equals to 50. And the reason is isosceles triangle. Please excuse my spellings. So this is 50 again. Now I am going for AOB, which is 180 minus 50 minus 50 is 80. And the reason is angle sum of triangle. Angle sum of triangle, which is 180 degrees. You take away these two angles and you're left with 80 degrees. Now you use the property of circles angle at center is twice the angle at circumference so if this is 2x this is x so a c b is equals to 80 divided by 2 that is 40 and this is the very reason angle at center is twice the angle at circumference C E this is the symbol so 40 degrees is your final answer okay what do we have here is P and Q are points on the circumference of the different circle center O and P are and Q are our tangents so tangent and radius they make an angle of 90 degrees to each other they are perpendicular so 90 degrees find P R so if we draw this line O through R it actually divides the given angle into half so 65 each using tan tan of 65 is perpendicular over base so 8 multiplied with this P R is equals to 17.156 approximately equal to 17.2 calculate the percentage of quadrilateral OPRQ that is shaded so OPRQ this is your quadrilateral four-sided figure and for shaded part so our path would be finding the complete area and then the area of this unshaded sector and subtract to get the area of shaded part so first going for the quadrilateral if you see it is split into two triangles triangle is 1 by 2 into base length into height so I'm considering this triangle 8 as my base and 17.2 as my height and these are symmetrical so times 2 will give you the area of complete quadrilateral which is 1 37.6 so we have the complete area now area for this blue region this sector which is angle by 360 into pi r square using your calculator you get 72.6 now from the whole shape subtract this to get the area of shaded region one thirty seven point six minus seventy two point six and your area is sixty five so area of shaded region is sixty five area of complete quadrilateral is 137.6 times 
times 100 and you get the percentage 47.438 and approximately equal to 47.2 percent question number 11 probability a bag contains 12 balls in which x are black and the other balls are white if we have 12 total x are black so remaining would be 12 minus x which is also displayed in the given tree diagram two balls are taken at random from the bag without replacement it is never placed back that means the total is reducing so complete the tree diagram first path is already given so for white white was never taken before so white are actually still 12 minus x but the total reduced by 1, black is already taken, so 12 minus x by 11. When we go for white after black, before black, so white is already taken, black was never taken, so black are still x, but the total reduced. Last part, white after white, the probability of white is already given, you are again taking one more white, so numerator reduces by 1. 11 minus x and the total also goes down because it was without replacement finding an expression for probability of taking one ball of each color one ball of each color so one is black the other is white i'm selecting this path and then one is white and other is black we select this path so we multiply the given values plus multiply the second chain so first chain is x by 12 times 12 minus x by 11. This is your first chain. Second is plus 12 minus x by 12 into x by 11. And then you simplify it to give your answer in terms of x. So this is 12x minus x squared over 132 plus again 12x minus x square over 132 so we can say this is 2 times 12x minus x square over 132 you multiply cancel these two so 12x minus x square over 66 this is your final answer C part says the probability that both ball are black, both are black is 14 by 33. So both are black is our first line, both black first line x by 12, x minus 1 by 11, x by 12 times x minus 1 by 11 and the probability is given it is 14 by 33. So there are two ways simplify this you can go for quadratic formula or midterm breaking the choice is yours so multiply these x square minus x 12 into 11 is 132 is equals to 14 by 33 you can actually simplify this by cancellation or cross multiply so 33 x square minus 33 x is equals to 1848 rearrange And I'm selecting quadratic formula for this. So minus b plus minus square root b square minus 4ac over 2a minus into minus 33 plus minus square root b square minus 4a is positive 33 and c is negative 1848 over 2a. Using your calculator, we get two values 8 and minus 7. So it is number of balls which cannot be negative. So the final answer is 8. Question number 12. And the topic is vectors. A is the point 2 comma 3. B is the point 3 comma minus 5. Find A, B. It is always like this. O, B minus OA just for example for understanding PQ is OQ 
minus op it is always this case write the second one first and then the previous one just plug in the values ob is right here which is the position vector 3 minus 5 minus 2 3 so 3 minus 2 is 1 minus 8 so this is 1 minus 8 it says find the coordinates of c b c is given in the same manner as we did the first part we know that b c will be o c minus o b so we have to find c so we make this subject of the formula o c is equals to b c plus o b and these are the arrowheads b c is given minus 4 3 o b lies in the first statement which is 3 minus 5 so minus 4 and 3 is minus 1 3 minus 5 is minus 2 and the coordinates are minus 1 minus 2 moving along a d we have a in the first statement which is 2 comma 3 so a is 2 comma 3 d is unknown and a d this symbol actually means this is the distance so a d is equals to x2 minus x1 whole squared plus y2 minus y1 whole squared whole under the root we just plug in the values and simplify so a d is already given square root 74 is equals to x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1 whole square root getting rid of the square root right here by squaring both sides so you get rid of the square root this is 74 is equals to minus 3 minus 2 minus 5 square of minus 5 is 25 plus a square minus 2ab plus b square rearrange bringing 74 to right hand side and square minus 6 and plus 9 plus 25 minus 74 is equals to 0 you get n square minus 6 n minus 40 this time i'm going for mid term breaking it is 10 4 times 40 and 10 minus 4 is 6 so n square minus 10 n plus 4 n minus 40 adding these two we get negative 6 multiplying these two we get negative 40 so n n minus 10 plus 4 n minus 10 is equals to 0 n plus 4 times n minus 10 is equals to 0 first bracket n plus 4 is equals to 0 second bracket plus 4 second bracket is n minus 10 n minus 10 is equals to 0 so n is either minus 4 or n is positive 10 OQRP is a parallelogram OQRP is a parallelogram OQRP OP OP this complete line is P OQ this complete is Q K is the midpoint. If it is the midpoint, 1 ratio 1 of OQ and L is the point on PR. So L ri ri lies right here, but we do not know the ratio. And KL, this line is given that it is P minus 1 by 10 Q. So finding PL ratio LR, we have to find PL ratio LR we are already given with kl so to find pl i'm using this path po plus ok plus kl po plus ok plus kl so pl is equals to po plus ok plus kl P O is be very careful it is negative P because it is going against the direction and O L is half of Q K L is given in the question that is P minus 1 by 10 Q 
simplify positive p goes with negative p use your calculators and you get 2 by 5 q so if this is 2 out of 5 of q and we know that q was this full line so if it is 2 by 5 of this full line the remaining must be 3 by 5 so there you go you have your ratios that p l ratio l r is 2 ratio 3 this was it if you have any queries you may ask please like and subscribe share to help others and support We'll be coming back with new papers soon, inshallah. Take care. Allah Hafiz.